and welcome to TFI Card Tips. We're looking at Sweep today. That's this button here. What does it do and why haven't I done this already in the two years since I've been doing tutorials? I, I, I don't know. I evidently haven't. I thought I had. Anyway, Sweep is an alternative to Extrude in a kind of way, whereas Extrude takes a profile, square, circle, and then creates a solid in a straight line, sort of straight up from that profile. Sweep creates a 3D object by taking that profile and then sweeping it along a path. So in order for sweep to work, you need two things. You need a profile sketch and you need a path sketch. So you need two sketches like this. Right, so typical examples of a, of a sweep. There, there isn't any sort of, you will use a sweep for this and you will for that. Oh, but not for this. No, there, there isn't any kind of guidelines, really. It depends on what it is you want to create. But some good examples are things like wires, cables, tubes, pipes, those sort of things. Uh, rods, well, rod that could, be, that could be an extrusion, but it's anything that's sort of, you know, like wire cables and pipes. You know, you know what I mean. So you need two things, like I said, profile and a path. So let's create a sketch. Let's drop a sketch on the XY plane and let's create a control vertex spline and go dink, 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 and dink. Okay, right, that's our path. So we're going to sweep a circle along this line. So instead of the circle just going in a straight line, it's going to follow this path. So that's our path. And if you want to be anal about it, you can rename that to path. Right, the next thing that you need to do is to create your profile on the... It doesn't have to be, but it massively helps if your profile is on the end of the sweep path, like attached to the end of it. It massively helps. It's good practice to get into. Now, there's a couple of tips that you can, that you can use here just to make sure that it's perfectly in sync always. And if your path ever moves, that you're the end point moves with it and your profile moves with it and everything's in tandem so one of those tips is to create a work plane and then instead of sort of randomly placing the work planes instead of guessing and taking measurements attach your work plane to the end of the path so click plane click the end point of your path and then click your path and then that creates a work plane perfectly normal to the path itself so what happens now is if i grab the end of this path and move it and then click update, that work plane will follow the end of the path and it'll always be normal. So if I draw a circle on this plane central to that dot, the circle is always perfectly normal to that path and you'll never get that sort of skewed effect uh, when you're sweeping it along the path. Another tip as well, this isn't massively important at all, but it's just one of those OCD things that I always do. This purple side of the work plane, now you can check out my work plane video, I'll link it up here. The purple side of the work plane is the negative side of the work plane and the orange side of the work plane is the positive side. Now I always prefer the orange side to be away from the path. So just right click on the work plane and then flip the normal and then that flips it around. So the negative side's over here and the positive side's here. So then we're gonna create a sketch on that plane and then what you wanna do is create a, do a project geometry and then project the end of the line. So then that, that burns the end point of the path onto this sketch. So when you create your circle, you snap it to that line. So if that path does move, your profile is attached to that path using projected geometry. So that again, massively helps. And then we can say, make this, I don't know. This is all obviously completely situational, whatever the diameter is that you want it to be. So let's just say three. You do need to be careful about the bend. If that circle's too big to bend around there, so if it's so if it self intersects as it's bending around, then the sweep will fail. So you need to make sure that the circle isn't too big or the bends aren't too tight. Click finish sketch. We've now got a profile. We've now got a path. We can turn the work plane off, and then we can say sweep. And because we've only got two things in this part file, all we have is a profile and a path. Invent is sort of intelligent enough to go well. I'm assuming you want to use both those together, and then it'll do just that. There's a couple of things you can change in here. You can say, you know, you can have a, a surface instead of a solid, and that'll create like a thin wall surface instead of a solid body. But it, in most cases, you want to create a solid. Uh, the profile orientation is always going to be in line with the path. You can also say make it parallel, but in this case, that's just not going to work. It's just going to create sort of this flat effect as it goes through because it's always it's keeping the profile at that angle as it's sweeping along, so the, that circle isn't sort of bending with the uh, with the path, but in most cases you're gonna want it to do that. And you can also put a taper on it as well. So you can say, you know, get larger as it's sweeping along the path, and that's done on a degrees basis, which in most cases, unless you're an absolute genius mathematician, is going to be trial and error. 
uh, but there will come to a, <laughs> there, there is a point where it just gets absolutely ludicrous but we'll stick that at zero and then click OK and then there's your sweep all done. If you want to change it at any point, you can find the sweep feature in the browser, expand it, and then you can say, right, well, I want to change the path. So you can double click your path sketch, and then we can sort of drag that up here. We can do whatever we want with it. And because our work plane is attached to the end, the work plane will move with the end of the path, and then that means the sketch profile will move with the end of the path, and everything is always absolutely perfect. And that's really good for sort of in-progress designs that, you know, conceptual designs where you, you're not quite sure where things are going to go and you're going to need to drag them around and you don't want to have to completely rebuild features as you're doing it. They'll always stay up to date. Right, there's a couple of other things that we can that we can do with Sweep. Now, I've got a, a pre-prepared sketch or a pre-prepared part that I can use for a couple of these examples. So if we've got Sweep, yes, we can click our profile and yes, we can click our path. But we've also got this type drop down here where we can say, I want to use a guide rail as well. So we can select a path, which is that line there. And then we can also pick a guide rail. And a guide rail is a third sketch. So this is when you need three sketches for a sweep. Select the guide rail little arrow here, and then you can select that third sketch. Now notice how this guide rail is attached to the profile. Again, that is really important. That needs to be the case. But as it's sweeping this profile along this path, it will follow this line as a guide rail and you can see what it's doing there it's fo the pro the the profile's blending and it's morphing along that guide rail as it's being swept along the line and it's doing that in the x and the y axes up and then across if you say just the x it'll just follow it in one direction and then you can say none as well which is absolutely pointless you might as well have not done it in the first place so we can say x and y and then click okay and then there's your sweep with a guide rail so using that you can you can create some quite funky shapes using sweep if you were to use that technique and um, we can say there there's another one here so we've got like you can see what this is this is obviously the hand grip for it's a hairdryer obviously uh, so there's a, a guide rail which is going to be the hand grip so you can say give me that profile give me that path and then I want to use as a guide rail this line here and then you can see what it's going to do there click OK and it's all good now the third option is to follow a path and a guide surface now this one is I wouldn't say this one's all that common, but it's just good to see it work so you kind of know what it can do. So what we've got here, now I need to do a bit of preparation to get this one to work. I've got a profile in here, so that little line there is actually a rectangle, and I want that. I want to sweep that rectangle along the surface of this solid, but then I want to follow a line on there as well. So what we can do is we can create a 3D sketch and then create an intersection curve between these two here. And obviously that's completely unrelated to sweep, but that gives me a line that's touching that body like that. And then what I can do is turn off this surface because I don't need it anymore. And then, and then we can use a sweep. And this time, instead of creating geometry, you can use sweep as a cut. So I'm going to cut along this path. So it's going to create like a cut out along the body following that path but you can see you can see that as it's blending that rectangle along that path it's sort of lifting off the surface so you're not going to get a perfect cut so to fix that you can say follow a guide surface and then pick this solid here and then it's following that see, the preview didn't work but you can see it's following that guide surface absolutely perfectly as it's running the sweep along that path. So those are the three different sweep options that you've got. The world's your oyster with it. You can create literally anything you want as long as you can get the, pro the profile and the path tied together, make them adaptive to each other using the project geometry. Yeah, you can do all kinds of funky shapes. So that's sweep. I think that's probably enough as a beginner's guide to getting started on it. If you like that, please press like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of jazz, you know, usual stuff that people say at the end of YouTube videos and toodles.